Prime Minister, it's been a hell of a day. It's been a big couple of weeks. <laughs> but particularly today, you've had a real test with Stuart Nash. And tell us why he remains in Cabinet. So clearly, you know, Stuart hasn't met the expectations that I would have of him or that I think New Zealanders should have of a minister in the Cabinet. And I have to weigh up then what the appropriate response to that is. Um, in terms of his, you know, earlier issues in the, earlier in the week, he lost the police portfolio. Clearly some more things have come to light. I've considered those in light of... The, the, you know, what the response was to other ministers in similar circumstances and I've made the decision to, to demote him and to put him on a final warning. Um, Prime Minister, he is a repeat offender. Uh, three, we've had three incidents now come out over the past three days. Why does he remain in Cabinet? So I have to consider, you know, ultimately the, the facts of the case, the motivations behind the case, and all of them here, there was no personal interest involved. It wasn't like he was advocating for some of his friends or people who he knew, which has been in the past, circumstances in which ministers have lost their jobs. In this case, he was advocating for constituents. He chose a, an incorrect process. Uh, the commentary, you know, the, the choice of words that he had in commenting on matters before the court weren't a an appropriate choice of words for a minister to use. Uh, this is a reminder, I guess, to all ministers. So they have to be more careful in the words that they use to other politicians and to other members of the public. Well, that is exactly the point, isn't it? Because when you are a minister of the Crown, you have power, but you also have responsibility. And it seems to me that he has um, been cavalier in his approach, and he has done it on multiple occasions. He's ultimately faced a, a consequence for his comments and for his actions and, and I do expect that he will do better in the future. But as I said, I've carefully weighed this up against you know, the, the sanction that's been applied to other ministers, other members of parliament uh, in similar circumstances. Well, other um, ministers who have lost their portfolios, they have also been ejected from the executive as well. He's the only one that I can see on this list here of 14 that hasn't been stripped of his cabinet roles. It depends on the circumstances. So, but he's like breached. I said, like I said, it depends on the circumstances. If you look at, I, I carefully reviewed that list as well of other ministers who have lost their roles and the circumstances around that. And in some, you know, many of those cases, there was a personal nature to it. So they were advocating on behalf of a friend. Uh, there was a personal interest in it. So they stood to gain personally from their decisions or from something that they had been involved with. That's not the case here. Well, this is a real risk for you though, isn't it? Because how do you know that there's nothing else. I've spoken to Stuart um, to get a reassurance from him. I've made, I've, you know, I've... I've he made that reassurance I've, early on and then two other things have come out. I've impressed on him the importance of making sure that he's carefully thinking back as to whether there are other issues that might come up. He's given me an assurance that he's carefully thought that through. Um, I think the key thing now is he knows that he's on a final warning. Um, I'm sure... Uh, that he's going to be extra vigilant uh, from here on in to make sure that he is upholding the standards that we would expect of a minister. I want to look at